There are, however, a huge number of patients in which it is not ideal to do the transfer in the same cycle of the IVF and hence, once the embryos are created, they are frozen and then these embryos are transferred subsequently later on in a different cycle. This is called the frozen embryo transfer. There is a certain subset of patients in which frozen embryo transfer is actually recommended and gives a much better and higher success rate. So now let us try to understand how a frozen embryo transfer occurs. In a frozen embryo transfers, we do not have to, uh, we are not concerned with creating the eggs anymore. We only have to prepare the lining of the uterus so that the embryos can be transferred into a healthy uterus to accept the pregnancy. There are various protocols that can be used to create a lining of the uterus and that is what we are going to be talking today. One of these protocols is known as the natural cycle uh, frozen embryo transfer or the natural cycle FET. So let us try to understand what it is all about. Now let's try to understand what happens in a natural cycle FET. There are multiple steps occurring at specific times during a four week period. An approximate timetable and overview is now what I'm going to be talking to you about. The first step will be monitoring your follicular development along with monitoring the LH surge. Then there will be documentation of ovulation after which the embryo transfer will occur. We may provide some hormonal supplements and then a pregnancy test will be done and then followed by a consultation. The first step is monitoring your follicular development. Now this starts from the second or the third day of your cycle and then goes on daily from the ninth day onwards till ovulation is documented. The second step is monitoring for the LH surge. As the growing follicles nears maturity, the level of the hormone LH in blood and urine rises dramatically. This is known as the LH surge. It is important that the LH be monitored on a daily basis as the frozen embryo transfer date will be timed from the date of the LH surge. The timing of the embryo transfer depends upon which stage of the embryos, uh, which stage your embryos were frozen. Embryos that have been frozen on day 5 or a blastocyst stage will be transferred later in comparison to embryos that have been frozen earlier, for example on day 2 or day 3. And this is how the calculation will happen. Then is the documentation of ovulation. In addition to monitoring your uh, LH, we may also confirm ovulation with ultrasonography around the time of ovulation. In case for some reason ovulation does not occur, as we will see in a scan that the dominant follicle has not ruptured or collapsed, then your embryo transfer may be cancelled or we may give you some progesterone supplements. Then you will be told about the exact date of your embryo transfer. On the day of the scheduled transfer, your embryos are going to be thawed in the morning and then we will do the transfer of the number of embryos depending on their quality. Usually about one to two good quality embryos are transferred and it is important to remember that uh, it is better that we keep our pregnancy rates optimal without compromising on the health and safety of the mother by avoiding unnecessary multiple embryo transfers which can lead to multiple pregnancies and may lead to complications in pregnancy. After the embryo transfer is completed, this is usually by the way done under ultrasound guidance which gives a very good success rate and it is the standard protocol that should be followed everywhere. In the embryo transfer, a small plastic catheter will be placed inside your uterus from below the vagina. After about a little bit of waiting for 1-2 to two minutes to avoid any cramping, the embryos are then deposited inside the uterine cavity with a small amount of fluid. It is important to remember that no anesthesia is required. You are usually discharged after resting for about 20-30 to 30 minutes and no further prolonged bed rest is advised. Certain patients undergoing a natural cycle frozen embryo transfer may need supplements. However, because it is a natural cycle, most of the time women do not need any additional injections or progesterone support because the body is naturally producing this hormone. In certain women with ovulatory dysfunction or in whom injections were given or in whom there is a luteal phase inadequacy, 
injections or suppositories of progesterone may be given to con and continued till the pregnancy test is performed. Now, for whom is a natural cycle FET done? It is important to remember only women with regular periods can undergo a natural cycle FET. Women with irregular periods like those with PCOS may need medication to induce ovulation for a natural cycle FET. In contrast, women who are menopausal or have no natural periods of their own will always need an artificial cycle or an artificial uh, protocol for a frozen embryo transfer. What are the advantages of a natural cycle FET? While the frozen embryo transfer success rates are similar with both protocols, certain women for whom a natural cycle, uh, a hormone cycle is not indicated for uh, example because they have some intolerance to medications or medications cannot be given, these women are good candidates for a natural cycle FET. The few things that you need to consider and remember before you are being advised natural cycle frozen embryo transfer. One of these is that in comparison to an artificial cycle or a hormone replacement cycle, the natural cycle FET is more intensive. This is because you will need daily monitoring of your follicles and daily monitoring of your LH levels. This makes the protocol a little more intensive and definitely more expensive because of the frequent test that is being done. Also, because you have to remember that not every cycle your body will optimally be ready to accept an embryo. Because of this, a natural cycle FET has a higher cancellation rate in comparison to an artificial cycle where cancellation rates are pretty low. This protocol is also hence not very feasible for people who do not reside in the same city or in the same place where your fertility center resides. It is important to remember that you consider all options and you have a thorough discussion with your doctor before choosing the protocol which is best for you. I hope this video has helped you understand the natural cycle of frozen embryo transfer. Please do write down in the comments below if you need any more clarifications or any more videos to understand the process.